Hey guys, welcome to the Rusty Beauty's Garage again. Uh, we are working today on the 1964 TR4, which we already pulled the engine out of. You see, we have an empty engine bay. So the engine and transmission came out together. They're right here. Uh, we haven't started working on them yet. But on the weekend with my friend David, Chef Tash, as you may know him, we tore apart another engine. That's my 1972 GT6 engine. So if you're following that video series, you know what we've done here. We took this engine apart. So it's going to be a little bit confusing now because we're going to start tearing apart this engine as well. And I know that many of you don't like these videos as much as the metal shaping and metal working videos but I film what I have. <laughs> I don't uh, tailor my jobs according to the videos that I want to make. I tailor my videos according to the jobs that I'm working on in this particular moment. So anyways, I'm gonna have to put everything away now from that engine so we don't mix up parts. Not that they're the same, they're different, but still we want to reorganize a little bit. And then we're gonna start stripping this one and see what's wrong with it because we had different compression on the different cylinders like it was somewhere high somewhere low so we will see what's going on anyways uh long story short let's get crack locking all right so i rearranged all the gt6 parts here on the frame so they are out of the way so, to begin with, we're going to split the engine and the transmission, of course, and we're going to put the engine on the stand, and then we're going to talk a little bit more about it. Alright, so the transmission is taken off, we're going to inspect it later, but as you can see, there's uh, oil in the bell housing, and that oil is definitely not from the transmission, I believe, because it is on the back side of the flywheel, or the front side, the engine side. Here you can see it, I took it out, and there's even still, there's still oil in it, so, and as you can see here, the clutch side is dry and the clutch plate is pretty dry as well like it is greasy but it's not like there's fresh oil on, the, on this side of the flywheel so these seals we're gonna take it apart and you will see what they look like uh, there are two halves here they are notorious for leaking so we might go here with a conversion kit it's a little bit more expensive, but it prevents leaking because you see, so it's leaking a lot from here. I'll show you how the, leak, the seal works, how it is designed to work and why it's not very efficient. Anyways, I'm just inspecting things as I'm going. That's how I always work as I'm taking everything apart. Each and every part gets inspected. So the clutch, the clutch plate it's in a good shape but we're gonna need a new clutch this is it still has life in it but it's not worth uh, installing it again when it's halfway gone so now that the clutch is out and the flywheel is out we can mount here the engine part of the engine stand that i still don't know what it's called <laughs> the holder the engine stand holder i don't know or actually I might clean here first before I mount that part because then later we're not gonna have access and I want to do that when it's on the stand before I take it apart I want to go around and clean the block so we don't get super dirty as we're taking it apart because 
because it's the best thing to do, you know? Well, I got carried away and I <laughs> cleaned the whole engine. Like, not perfectly, of course, we're gonna have to clean each and every component individually and paint it probably. So, cleaned it roughly because there was lots of grease, especially here in the front end. You can still see the oil pan that I haven't cleaned, but now it is much better and cleaner to work on. <laughs> I noticed the front engine plate is pretty bent here you see how it goes back so we're gonna have to straighten it but I don't know why that happened because it's bent so much that it shouldn't fit you know it shouldn't fit in the engine bay but it fits so I don't know if this uh, body mount has adjustment here maybe the body mount needs to be adjusted yeah I don't know. We're going to remove it and we'll see. We have to replace this anyways, so we're going to see if there's a horizontal adjustment because that's bent a lot. Anyways, let me get rid of this and we're going to continue. Alright, so we, before, we put the, before we put the engine stand mount, whatever it is, we're going to take out these screws from here, from the rear seal, because it's easier to take them out now. And also, we're gonna check this bushing here inside the. <laughs> Thank you. Excuse me. Inside the crankshaft, there's this bushing. It's called pilot bushing because this is where the end of the transmission input shaft fits inside this pilot bushing. So we're gonna check it for play. It doesn't have any play inside the crankshaft, but we also have to check it at the end of the transmission like this and here it has a lot of play so we're gonna buy new bushing well if you look at that actually somebody sleeved that see it was worn and probably when they were changing clutch or something they realized it was worn so they machined it down and they put a sleeve on the outside so now we can do the same on the inside well, it's too much work for what it costs. It's like three dollars, I believe, this bushing. Unless it's not available, I don't know. Anyways, we're gonna keep this one for now, but uh, we're gonna order a new one. Alright, so she is on the engine stand and I just drained the oil, removed the oil filter and I'm gonna just keep going around here now and stripping everything that, that's external to the engine. I'm just gonna keep you on time lapse because I don't wanna be alone here. You keep me company, but there's nothing to explain. We're gonna start explaining when we start taking other parts from inside. I just removed the thermostat housing and you see this? 
it's a dummy thermostat. <laughs> There's no thermostat at all. That's interesting. Well, we're gonna put the real one. how loose this chain is like the tensioner was probably not even doing anything anymore because that's where it is wow and look the tensioner made pretty deep ridge here hmm look it's even getting stuck there anyways we'll see i don't know if we can maybe fill this up with weld yeah we can do that we can fill this up with weld and grind it but it looks like this is not the original chain it looks like it's been changed at some point or work has been done on this engine because look there are some additional marks i don't know we're not gonna even attempt to uh, mark it in any way because we have to change these gears anyway so any markings that we do now we will lose them but we will you will see how we're gonna do our own timing with a degree wheel yeah, and look how the tub washer was bent a little bit, just one side. Anyways, for whatever reason, somebody's been here. And uh, everywhere there's uh, silicone instead of gaskets. I think actually there is a gasket here on this cover. Yep. There is gasket, but they added silicone just for good measure, I guess. And uh, yeah, we keep stripping here. There's not much left, so... Now we're going to remove the gear from here, so we can take out the front engine plate. We're not going to take out the camshaft yet, because the tappets are now on it and are pushing on it. So we have to remove the head, the tappets, and then we're going to pull out the camshaft. But yeah, there's not much left here. Externally, everything is removed. Let's start with the internal components now. So, like I said, we, as we are taking everything apart, we're gonna be inspecting it too. Look at the color of all that, it is all burnt. This engine, as you may know, is used for many different models of Triumph, including TR2, TR3, TR4, with uh, very slight differences. Um, like different camshafts between TR3 and TR4, I believe. I believe at some point they changed the valve sizes and the cylinder sizes are different between TR2 and 3 and TR4. And so there are, I believe, three different liners available. And I know many owners who convert their TR3 and TR2 engines into TR4 by changing the camshaft and changing the liners to the maximum um, bore which of course gives you a little bit more horsepower like i mentioned in the beginning of the video series about this car the owner was complaining that there was oil leaks from all over the place from here and normally as you know these cars they struggle from lack of oil at the top end but this one was actually having way too much oil here and it was leaking around the studs here even from the filler cup so there was way too much oil here and it was under pressure so I'm thinking that has something to do with the breather because this engine doesn't have a breather for the crankcase. At some point, uh, Triumph lost this breather because of emissions, I guess. And I have to do some research and see what changed when, the, when they removed the breather. I think they changed something here at the top end too to lose that pressure because that pressure is now building up inside the crankcase and that may cause all these leaks here and how does pressure build in the crankcase from blow by because there's always a blow by and especially in this engine looks like the rings were worn and um, the blow by was building a lot of pressure in the crankcase and that pressure of course through the oil galleries and everywhere was building up also here in the top end under the valve cover and that's why it was leaking so much oil 
So I believe by rebuilding the engine, we're going to reduce that. But I have to see also what Triumph did when they eliminated the breeder, because I believe there was something. Anyways, a uh, lot of talking again. Let's start removing the rocker shaft. And first, the first thing I check always when I take out the cover is whether this screw is here, because this screw holds the rocker shaft in certain orientation, which allows oil to travel through this pedestal, through the shaft, which is hollow, and to be delivered, the oil to be delivered everywhere here. But if this screw comes off, first of all, it is a danger because it might end up in the wrong place in the engine. But also the rocker shaft can turn and the hole on the rocker shaft won't line up with the hole on the pedestal and then there's no oil. So first thing always when I remove the cover is to make sure that this screw is there and it is, which is a good sign. So later we're gonna check it and see if there's ridges sometimes under the rockers because of the lack of oil, especially here in the front end because the oil gets delivered here through this hole. Here on the head there's a hole, matches this hole. The top end of this channel here matches the shaft and the shaft delivers to everywhere oil here. But like I said, because this end is far away from where the oil comes, many times here in the front end, the shaft is pretty scratched. And you can tell sometimes by trying to slide this rocker. Well, this one slides pretty well, actually. But, uh, but if it dug itself into the shaft, then when you try to slide it, it doesn't slide very nice. But anyways, we're going to inspect the shaft. Now we're gonna start taking out the push rods. Wow. How is this stuck that bad? Like they're supposed to come out easy. But this one is like stuck, stuck. Why? Uh oh, this one is bent. This one is really bent. Huh. How was this car running? I don't think so. Wow, it's so bent, I can't even take it out. Wow. Okay. I don't know if you see, but it is really bad. Okay, I'm gonna force it out, which is gonna damage it even more, but we're gonna have to buy new ones. Maybe we, if we're changing one, we should change them all, I believe. We will see. <coughs> Take it out. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> Holy. Okay, so that's the situation here. Number three turned into an S. So now we're gonna start taking the head out, but it is recommended to loosen the bolts in the same order or in the opposite order of what the recommended order for tightening is. So that's from outside towards the center. So this one I already lo uh, loosened because I used this stud to lift the engine which it is designed for that, just this one was missing the eye anyways. So we're gonna loosen the outside first, then this outside, then this, then this, and then this, like a spiral, you know what I mean? So I'm gonna loosen them first, and then we're gonna remove them completely. So this is a lead hammer that I'm using, so don't worry. Like I remember the time when I used to remove every head by hand. 
here. I don't know why, but huh, they're all giving me troubles now. Two days ago when I was removing the GT6 head, it was the same thing. I needed to turn it upside down and hammer it out, literally. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put back two of the nuts and this one, I'm assuming this one is the, the one that's giving me troubles because it's rusted, but we will see. So we're putting this back just to hold the head if it decides to come out suddenly. And we're gonna flip the engine upside down. Of course, leak from everywhere. Like, uh, I hate coolant. I prefer oil than coolant. I help. Use the. You know what? I'm afraid. I don't want to cause way too much damage, so I'm gonna flip it back up. And what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to remove the studs. I don't know if I have enough room here for two nuts to lock them together, but I will try. Because I have the feeling this head is gonna give me a lot of troubles coming out. <laughs> Looks like this one is coming out. Good. They're all different sizes, different lengths. So when we are assembling them, we have to look at the manual. I'm not going to mark them now, I'm really against, especially on these old cars, I really prefer to go with manual than with marking stuff, because you never know who's been there, whether they've been put back in the right order or not, and it's not only about studs, it's also about wiring, somebody was telling me the other day on the wiring video, they say why didn't you mark the stuff, why didn't you mark the wires before you disconnected them and it was going to be so much easier to connect them well true but do i know if they're assembled correctly especially on a car that almost caught fire i wouldn't trust that i'd like to uh, disconnect everything and connect it according to the menu so here it's pretty much the same thing so they are five inches nine inches i don't even i don't remember exactly what is what, but you will see some of them are like this deep. You see this one is deep. But again, even the deep ones are not the same length. Some are nine and a half, some are nine, I believe. They're six, five. So, anyways. So you get the idea, I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna undo them all. I'm just not sure about this one. I, I think this one is gonna give me troubles. So actually, let's go and do that one first, while you're still here. Oh, the two nuts are moving together. It's not good. Okay. Well. Anyways, I'm going to try to remove all the other ones, the ones that are easy to remove, and then we're going to keep with the beating maybe, to beat this up. Alright, so all of them actually came out really easy. This is the only stubborn one. So, I'm going to try something which I've never tried before. I don't think it's going to work because I'm pretty sure that the head gasket is also stuck. But I'm going to try to twist it, because right now it's only held on this stud, so it can pivot around it. So let me try. I'm going to try with the rubber mallet, of course. Oh, actually, I think it moves. <laughs> we might even try to put the engine sideways and use the gravity again to help us, but let's try this way first. Well, it's actually moving. Okay, it's actually moving, so we just need to start moving it around this stud and it's going to come out. I don't think it's tight, but let's remove it. Let's remove the nuts anyway. Oh, 
don't tell me that. It's spinning together with the stud. Oh, so I need to <laughs> I need to spin the head to remove that stud. Oh my God, that's gonna take forever. Now we open the little gap here, so let's see if we can hammer the head down, at least to start, at least to break the rust a little bit, you know what I mean? I know that's not a great idea. Alright, that's better, right? Let's see. too much like hammering it is we might crack the head somewhere you know okay um the only way is to spin it around but we're gonna at some point we might bend the, the stud like it's heavy but that's the only way never done that before but there's first time for everything <laughs> I don't think this is the original gasket, which means that this engine has been rebuilt once. There you go. And this is where all the horses live. And the cylinders, as far as I can see, don't look bad. look bad I don't feel a ridge on top well, this is just carbon on top but I don't feel a ridge which is a good sign so hopefully we're gonna be able to save those pistons and liners let's see if we can take out the tappets inspect those because they are important and pull out the camshaft and inspect that because I'm curious to see because something happened with number three right and bend the push rod. So let's see here. Yeah, of course now the tappets are not coming out easy. Nope. Can pull the up. Yeah, this tappet is broken. I can tell that number three is broken. Or at least I can pull them up in upper position so they, they come out to the ridge and then they stop, to the edge and then they stop. So I'm gonna pull them all out to the edge so I can pull out the camshaft at least. No, I can't, they came down. <laughs> okay, if we flip it upside down. That's gonna be easy, right? This engine has camshaft burns, which makes it different from a TR6 engine. The TR6 engine doesn't have camshaft burns, which is interesting. So let's look at it quickly. Okay, so here, this is what the head looks like. So this is one, two, three. This is the valve that has the bent push rod. Um, I don't see anything wrong with it. Anyways, we're gonna take them out and we'll see. Uh, but let's look at the camshaft. very little pitting here that's on number one and a little bit more here on number two number three is the one that is the question mark 
Yeah, and there's spitting on it as well. I don't know if you see well. I hope you do. So here's number one. Here's number two. Number three. Number four. That's number five. Wow, look at that. And number six. Number six looks perfect. Number seven. Wow. I can clearly tell. Look at this profile. And look at this profile. I can clearly tell that this one is much lower than this one. We're going to measure it and we will see. But yeah, unfortunately, we're going to need also a camshaft. This one is... Um, confident that this one is much shorter than this one all right this is me from the future <laughs> i'm editing the video right now and it turns out that uh, it wasn't that obvious on camera how badly worn the camshaft is so that's why i decided to come and measure it together with you so this is not the most precise setup that i have here everything is wobbly and uh, it's shaking but it is for these purposes it's more than enough so at the back of the cam here i zeroed it more or less it's a little bit off but doesn't really matter because i'm shaking it as i'm turning it but look at that now so now starts going up so that's 100 tau so far that's 200 250 255 let's say and then it goes back down so we have 255 lift on this cam. Comes back to zero more or less. So 250, let's say, or 260, somewhere there. Let's measure the second one though. And that's actually number seven, not two. So yeah, it's again, not exact. It, not exactly at zero, but let's see. Now it starts going up, 100, 200, and 25, and then it goes back. So you see there's 20, 25, 30 tau difference. Let's go one more time. One hundred, two hundred, twenty. And this time it went to 30. So it's 20 to 30 tau difference between number 7 and number 8. Let's see number 6 for example, but I can tell that number 1 as well is worn a lot. Let me flip the camshaft around and we will measure number 1 as well. This journal is bigger, that's why. I'm gonna move it a little bit. Okay, let's zero it here now. Okay, somewhere there. So let's see what this one is gonna show. So 100, 200 and almost 50 okay this one is not that worn let's see number two we're not going to measure them all okay one two so this one is much taller than the other one so it is 260 something and even goes below zero, so it is 265. There you go, yeah, 265. So between 225 and 265, very roughly, that tells us that this camshaft is garbage anyways. All right, so it is late. I mean, it's not that late, it's 6 p.m., but I was called for dinner. So tomorrow we're gonna finish taking apart the bottom end and we're gonna measure everything and we're gonna 
determine what parts we need to buy. We have to take the head apart as well. We're gonna check the oil pump and everything. But yeah, that's gonna happen tomorrow. For me, for you, it's gonna be in a second, like. All right, me from the future again. So I also realized as I'm editing the video that it is too long. I was planning to have the whole entire disassembly in one video, but it's gonna be an over an hour video because guess what? We found some interesting stuff at the bottom end as well. So I'm gonna end it here and I'm gonna see you in the next one, which believe me, it's interesting to watch that one too. Let's see what is wrong with the bottom end. So thanks for watching, commenting, subscribing, sharing and supporting the channel and I'll see you soon. Bye.